one of the points I want to make is that one, one of the most important developments in evolutionary theory is called major transitions. And what major transitions tells us is that, as amazing as it might seem, that the individuals of today are the social groups of past ages. And the first person to develop this theory was Lynn Margulis, and you might very well know the theory of the symbiotic cell, that the nucleated cell did not evolve by small mutational steps from bacterial cells, but as groups, communities of bacteria, becoming so integrated that they become an organism in their own uh, right. And much more recently, I think what's emerging, which solves a lot of problems about our human uniqueness, is that human evolution represents a major transition. And that's why we're so much more cooperative, basically, than, although cooperation certainly exists in other primate species, the reason we're so much more cooperative is because this transition happens. And what a transition is, is a shift in the balance between levels of selection, so that whereas before there's like plan A and plan B for how to succeed, Plan A is succeeding at the expense of your neighbor. Plan B is succeeding collectively as a group compared to other groups. And a major transition is, is a basically a suppression of Plan A so that Plan B becomes the, uh, the main force in evolution. Now let me just make one slight more point because the, the idea of morality from an evolutionary perspective is not just being considered by us evolutionists, but it's also being considered by the best moral philosophers of our time. And one book is called The Evolution of Morality by Richard Joyce, who says this, if altruism was purely instinctive, it wouldn't even count as moral. We would not recognize it as it's moral. What's so distinctive about morality, human morality is a sense of obligation, that we might not be moral, but we're obligated to be moral. And so that sense of human obligation, of kind of being locked into a system, in which, uh, in which you're held accountable and other individuals make sure that you're accountable. That goes beyond instinctive altruism. And that kind of locked-in system, when you study it, is astonishingly similar to the kind of locked-in system that causes uh, uh, genes, for example, to obey themselves in individuals. The rules of meiosis, for example, uh, which is the fair allocation of genes into the next generation, becomes like a moral rule, basically, a rule of fairness. And so the isomorphism between a human moral system in this more sophisticated sense, beyond instinctive altruism, and the kind of regulatory systems which cause individuals to function well precisely because selection from within has been foreclosed, is astonishing. And that's not even a comparison between humans and primates, as fascinating mm -hmm. as that might be. That's a comparison between humans as a product of a major transition compared to other major transitions way back in the history of life.